a more technically accurate title for this video would have been The False Dichotomy of Masculine Order and Feminine Chaos. But the algorithm gods are as transient as they are fickle, which is a marginally less pretentious way of saying, I don't know how many people on the internet would know what the word dichotomy means, and so certain sacrifices must be made. But anyway, on with the day's esoteric ramblings. Those of you familiar with pretty much any form of classic Indo-European religious teachings, whether they be Taoist, Buddhist, Hermetic, Abrahamic, Pagan, or whatever else, or if you've watched any good anime or played literally any of From Software's major titles, you will have been exposed to the concept of cosmic order and cosmic chaos, whether you know it or not. What you may not have known, because our modern Western society goes to great lengths to obscure it beneath layers of egalitarian hogwash, is that the dark side of the circle, the negative yin, has been classically associated with the feminine, and the white side, the positive yang, has historically been called the masculine side of the equation. This conception, so far as I can tell, has its roots in the notion that women are the more emotional and men the more logical gender, and as emotions are irrational by virtue of their being the product of impulsive chemical valves as opposed to logic, which lives in a matrix of deductive circuits, they are free to act arbitrarily, meaning without prior cause, to be contradictory, paradoxical, and in all other ways disorderly, all of which embodies the primeval aspect of chaos. This is all pretty much undeniable, empirical, biological fact, its roots being in the simple reality that women are the more vulnerable sex and so have nothing to gain and everything to lose by falling into predictable patterns. Meanwhile, men who are expected to be stronger than the dragon of chaos have everything to gain by appearing straightforward and integral. By not needing to sway with the wind or tilt with the waves, he proves his greater strength and resilience, and thus his value to her as a mate. This critical dynamic, the expectation of strength versus the expectation of vulnerability, has defined human sexual relations and tensions for about as long as we've been a sexually reproductive species, which is forever. And of course, it's also led to the by now famous, or infamous depending on your context, dichotomy of females as selective and males as opportunistic breeders. And to this end, it is in the female's best interests that the males not understand the game she's playing as if they did, many would refuse to play, and we'd regress back to the way things were back in the Stone Age, with tribes of raiding bandits roaming wild, and the only thing stopping them from pillaging to their heart's content being a few motley contingents of scared farmers and merchants. However, while the human female's spirit does gravitate towards the infinitely fertile bed of cosmic void, while the male's leans away, there are bottles of order within chaos, and just so the reverse. The reason for this is because otherwise nothing could happen or even exist. Chaos is not nothingness, it's potential. Identifiable patterns in an infinite lake of potential become not only possible but inevitable, and as everything is patterns, systems of patterns, aka order, naturally arises. The problem for this order is that it draws in the form of lines which have beginnings and ends. It is a goal-based system, with the ultimate goal being to eternally perpetuate itself as that is the only conceivable way for it to not be arbitrary. For you see, goals are predicated on logic, and as logic will not allow things to be arbitrary, meaning it won't allow for effects without causes, this invariably results in the paradox of our linear existence trying to circle back around to swallow its own tail. Order feels a perpetual need to justify itself. Chaos doesn't. Order is immutable. Chaos is infinitely flexible. Order needs a start and an end point. It needs a goal, a definite finish. Chaos simply is. By itself, it is both the end and the journey. It is arbitrary, and in its eternal flux is rendered utterly incapable of fully committing to any one singular trajectory. This Ouroboron dance is what makes males and females complementary, but also mortal enemies. On the one hand, the human species cannot go on without us perpetuating our strange bipolar tango. But on the other, our mutually exclusive senses of direction and points of self-origin mean that we are also eternally in conflict both within ourselves and with one another. The male's dominant burning imperative to conduct meaningful enterprise contrasts his lower romantic craving for passion, while the female's logical base craving for security gets routinely undermined by an emotional lust for stimulating anarchy. All in all, I suppose my point is that, while men and women are each a half of our species' evolutionary coin, our mirrored natures put us at odds, which under natural circumstances wouldn't be a problem. However, when we fall for the delusion that our reflection is truly our identical twin, we shouldn't be at all surprised when cracks begin to show in our mirror's dangerously delicate pain. 
and there you have your morsel to chew on for the day, or the week, or month, or whatever. Until next time, stay safe, stay sane, and don't forget to exercise your common sense daily, lest it atrophy. Peace be upon you.